Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Sundial Grower stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Sundial is a Canadian cannabis producer. It started in 2006. It produces and distributes marijuana flowers, pre-rolls and vapes. The company went public in 2019, selling 11 million shares for $13 each. Cannabis is legal on the federal level in Canada since 2018. It is legal in 36 US states to some degree, but it is illegal on a federal level in the United States. 83% of Democrats were in favor of legalizing cannabis compared to just 48% of Republicans. Legalizing weed at the federal level would allow Sundial and its Canadian peers to enter the more lucrative U.S. market. This is one of the stocks that got swept up into the Reddit frenzy. This stock did not have a really high short interest, but it is a penny stock, which is attractive to young investors. Sundial has been issuing more stock, and now it's debt free. Even better than that, it has over $600 million of cash on its balance sheet. With a solid balance sheet, it can really capitalize if the United States gives it the green light to sell throughout the country. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid cap company, 3.1 billion market cap. They're trading at $2 a share and they have 1.5 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. And you could see the company has negative free cash flow every year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses and they had negative net income every year. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that's $60 million. It grew to $77 million in the trailing 12 months. This is the company's income statement. These numbers are in Canadian dollars, but everything on my spreadsheet is converted to US dollars since we're looking at the ticker that trades in the United States. The top line is the revenue, the sales, Below that is the cost of revenue. This is the cost of labor or cost of materials. The difference between those two numbers is their gross profit, and they do have positive gross profit every year. Below that is operating expenses. Examples are marketing expenses or depreciation, and they have negative operating income every year. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt. Then below that is other income and expenses. This is usually impairments but it could be other gains and losses outside of their operational business. Then below that is their pre-tax income, then their taxes. The bottom line of the income statement is their net income and it's negative every year and it seems to be getting worse. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant and equipment. An example is when they buy a warehouse to grow weed. The cost of that warehouse goes into CapEx. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they have negative free cash flow every year because they have negative operating cash flow plus they're investing so much back into their business. Since the company has negative free cash flow, it needs money from somewhere to run its business. In 2019, it issued 177 million of capital stock, and it also issued $245 million of debt. In the trailing 12 months, it issued 177 million of stock and $215 million of debt. When a company issues stock, it dilutes the current shareholders, making your shares less valuable. Since they're not making any money, they need money to run their business, else they'll have to go out of business. The most important part of any business is their operating cash flow. If you cannot generate positive operating cash flow at some point, you don't have much of a business because you cannot rely on debt and equity financing to run your business in the long term. Net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. The way you can think of operating cash flow, it's net income converted to cash. 
And the way you calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income, and then you have to adjust for the non-cash items on the income statement. We have to add back $13 million depreciation because that was an expense that brought down your net income. We have to add back a $113 million asset impairment. An asset impairment is when you decrease the value of an asset on your balance sheet and pass through the loss onto your income statement. They also had 28 million of stock-based compensation. So even though they reported a $300 million loss, they actually only lost $100 million of cash flow. Let's look at the capital structure, 175 million of equity, 154 million of debt. They're 53% equity, 47% debt. These numbers are from the last published balance sheet, which was 123119. Since then, they did a bunch of stock offerings, so they have no debt. And their WAC is 13.6%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for, that's $3.5 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $2 billion. We divide that by 1.5 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 137. They're trading at 208, so they're trading at a 51% premium. It's a sell according to the model. It's really hard to predict the future free cash flows of a company that has negative free cash flows. I looked at the analyst predictions, plus I also made my own assumptions based off of looking through their financials. If tomorrow the US government approved cannabis, their valuation may go through the roof and they may be really profitable, but we don't know what the future will hold. Plus, if the US does approve cannabis on a federal level, there will be competition. This is the stock price the last year. So you can see it's done really well, especially once Biden became president. This is every cannabis company in Wikipedia. Sundial is not on this list. I've done videos on a few of these companies. GW Pharmaceuticals, which recently got acquired, Planet 13 Holdings I did a video on. The stock has gone up 55% in the past 52 weeks, much better than S&P 500, which went up 17%. The low was 14 cents, the high was $4. And the stock is trading above its 50-day and 200-day moving average. This is the most liquid stock I've ever seen in my life. 1.3 billion shares have been traded on average the past 10 days. And of the 1.5 billion shares outstanding, only 430 million are on float, 3% are held by institutions, and 5.5% are shorted. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd, you'd have $2,500 today. Their biggest shareholder doesn't even own 1% of the stock. It's Hudson Bay. Then ETF managers, Shelley Unser, David Ball. Last is Arrow Grass. Let's look at their financials. The average PE in the market's nine, the median is 14. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. When a company has negative PE, you look to the price to sales ratio. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 41, so investors are paying $41 for $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 18. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet. And they have 175 million of equity, 127 million of tangible equity because they have 55 million of intangible assets on their balance sheet. The only way you can acquire an intangible asset is when you buy another company or merge with another company. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity. Negative net income, negative ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 0.6. The numbers from the current ratio are from their balance sheet as of 12-31-19. They did a bunch of capital raises, so they have a lot more cash on their balance sheet. Just this week, they did a $100 million stock offering, which will result in a company receiving nearly $75 million of cash. 
The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos of 16 companies in the same industry as Sundial. And if Sundial has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they are better in PE, even though they're negative because the average is so bad. They're doing worse in price to sales, worse in price to book, worse in current ratio. But this current ratio is as of 1231.19. Right now, I think their current ratio is fine. They have a terrible ROE. They are higher in debt than the average company and they're lower a market cap at 3.1 billion. And nobody in this industry pays a dividend. To summarize, I have them trading at a 51% premium, but this stock could definitely go higher based off of investor demand. A company's stock price is not based off of how well a company's doing financially. In the long run it is, but in the short run, anything can happen. The stock price can get bid up really high. So you could make a ton of money on a terrible company. You could lose a ton of money on a great company if you time it that way. Even if the US does not approve cannabis on a federal level, I still think this company will make money at some point because Canada is approved on a federal level and most countries are becoming a lot more relaxed with cannabis. I rank their free cash flows one out of 10 because they're always negative. I rank their revenue five out of 10 because they did grow from zero to 60 and then up to 77 during a difficult time like 2020. And I rank their ratios one out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.